Big Tony is going to bring the thunder. He's absolutely hilarious. He's a great friend of mine. He performs all over the Chicago area. Give it up for Chicago's own Ryan Rolls. Woo! Woo! Good for Bubba people. Woo! One guy? Seriously? I'm funny. We'll buy you some fans on an eBay tonight. <laughs> Oh, some good news. Like Bubba, I'm losing weight as well. I've lost 35 pounds in the last month and a half. <laughs> Don't applaud. Look at me. Bye. 35 pounds is like a deck chair off the Titanic. Good <laughs> <laughs> work, There are more deck chairs. It's horrible whenever your girlfriend starts comparing your weight loss to children she has. <laughs> <laughs> I went into her, I mean, I get totally undressed, I stand on the scale, and I've lost 35 pounds, 35.8 pounds, exactly. I get off the scale, and I'm like, hey, I just lost 35.8 pounds. And she said, wow, that's almost an entire Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a couple chances I can work with barrels and hog sets. <laughs> Since when is small children an increment of measurement? <laughs> I mean, really, it's just like, oh, uh, that's some good blow there. How much you got? 14 Jacobs. <laughs> $17 million. <laughs> oh, the way I've been losing my weight, I've been going to the gym and dieting the hard way, of course. I've made some interesting discoveries at the gym. A men's locker room is a horrible place for wall-to-wall -wall mirrors yeah. and soft music being played in the background. <laughs> I'm listening to Keep Bleeding Love while naked men run around. I clenched my ass so tight my waist dropped six inches. <laughs> <laughs> then I got a friend of mine who goes to the same gym I do, and he's in the locker room with me, and he is completely naked. And he goes, hey Ryan, how are you? Just letting it dangle like the way he was born. And I look at him and I said, stop right there. You and me, we got a friendship, but that friendship only exists outside of pants. <laughs> I don't want any naked guys knowing my name. <laughs> I don't want to even think that there's a friend of mine who could be showering at this moment thinking to himself, gee, I wonder what Ryan is doing <laughs> as he's washing his tank. <laughs> oh, dieting's no fun. I got a question for you. Why is it whenever anybody starts a diet, there's all these fatter people who give you advice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, I, I seriously, I'm starting at the gym, and like I said, I, just, I lost 38 pounds, and I'm thinking, I get off the scale, there's a guy who's eclipsing me, which is a very hard job to do. <laughs> Staying over me, and he says, so you're dieting, I take it too, right? And he said, I said, yeah. And he said, you know what you should do? I said, yeah, not listen to your Buick-sized ass. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get into a boxing match with a world champion and think, gee, I wonder who I should get as my corner man, Mike Tyson or Glass Joe from fucking boxing. <laughs> oh, and dieting is the worst. It is. Because with dieting, you have to figure out a regimen. We went with the slim fast regimen. Which means you have a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and then the next person who talks to you out of tone, you wind up stabbing you in the throat with a hat pin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They should tell, should tell me I should be, uh, one thing we should do is snack more nutritiously. I was laying in bed later and I get up, I go have a midnight snack and I grip up. I didn't want to make anything, so I grabbed the Pop Tart. <laughs> I eat it and I go back to bed. She rolls over and she says, You smell like you smell like pastry, what is that? I said, I just had a Pop Tart as a snack. And she says, Now you know a Pop Tart has no nutritional value, right? <laughs> I looked at her and said, Don't you smoke? <laughs> 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 Willingly. 
Yes, and uh, true sign of um, losing weight, by the way, you know, whenever that uh, achievement fat people get is whenever your pants start fitting looser. I should have worn myself a belt yesterday. I'm walking with a couple of friends to the train, and I was like, hey, can you guys hold my stuff? I'm not wearing a belt, my pants are falling down. One of my friends turns to me and goes, dude, what you need to do is put some more weight back on. <laughs> <laughs> Great, how's that job at the suicide hotline working? <laughs> so you got a gun in your mouth, do you? What's it taste like? <laughs> Pull the trigger, it's candy and rainbows. Candy and rainbows. <laughs> Has to get fired from the suicide hotline. Zach, did you come in here? We gotta let you go. No, we haven't had any complaints, exactly. <laughs> more. They won't do any complaining. Oh. Uh, so I'm getting older. I'm starting to realize that. This, you know when you're getting older is whenever time starts like feeling like it's not as long as it could be. You know? Like, I was just thinking a couple of weeks back, like, wow, you know, 9-11 was nine years ago coming up. And I'm, I'm like realizing that I'm getting older. And one thing I'm doing as I'm getting older is I'm looking back at some of the jobs I've had and the reasons why I can't hold a job. Like one of the things I, uh, I did was uh, I would used to be a firefighter dispatcher. I used to basically call the cars and tell them where to go, tell the trucks and tell them where they're going. And I got fired from that job for having a sense of humor, which I guess is the worst place to have a sense of humor. <laughs> because you know, somebody calls in and says, yeah, at Burger King, they're having a, uh, there's this guy having a seizure. So I learned the hard way that you're not supposed to call it in as a flopper from a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> then I uh, worked with the uh, Special Olympics. That was fun until I uh, got fired from there. Again, having a sense of humor. <laughs> uh, what happened was, I, w I have a little bit of a martial arts background. So they asked me to referee the midget kickboxing match. <laughs> and I broke into hysterics whenever I said no low blows. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are laughing because they didn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> you know, either that or the joke went over their head. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching uh, some ESPN the other night. It's being classic, I love that. You get to relive some old memories, watch Monday Night Football. And I got this brain dead quarterback, former NFL quarterback, who's now an analyst. And he says, you know, this team is struggling with their passing right now. You know, if they had a more accurate quarterback, I bet you they'd complete more passes. Oh, that's, that's fucking insightful, isn't it? If you had a more accurate quarterback, you'd complete more passes. Fucking dog. We get more green lights. We get home faster. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the same brain dead asshole who stands over me while I'm at 7-Eleven turning in a loser ticket and said, see, all you needed was six more numbers and, well, you'd be a millionaire. <laughs> Thanks, you dumb fuck. <laughs> oh, another thing I love on ESPN lately. You guys ever watch bull riding? God, I love that. The reason why I love it is because I find it so ironic that they have bull, these bull riders that are about 160 to 220 pounds. Whenever this animal that they are riding is sometimes three tons, two tons at least. I find it unusual why they're giving these huge steroid injected bulls guys who weigh no more than a bowel movement to them <laughs> on their back. You know, they're trying to hold on for eight seconds. I got a solution for this. Get some guys my size as the bull riders. <laughs> Throw me on that goddamn bull. Shirt number eight. Roll, roll. I'll adjust my hat. I'll grab the reins. And when that fucker bucks, he's going to show himself a goddamn hip. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new definition of ground beef, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, guys, I'm out. Good night. <laughs>